Good evening, everyone. The executive session of the Wayne Board of Education regular meeting of June 13, 2024 was convened in the conference room of the Wayne Board of Education, 50 Nellis Drive, Wayne, New Jersey. Statement of compliance setting forth date, time, and location was read in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act and the roll call was taken. The meeting was recessed and is now being re reconvened. Please stand for a moment of silence and followed by the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Tonight we're going to begin with recognition to our Eagle Scout Awards, Mr. Giordano, Mrs. Rigoloso. Thank you very much. This is uh, a resolution to recognize uh, a couple of our uh, a couple of our Boy Scouts who have achieved the rank of Eagle Scout. Something that's just unbelievable. So we want to salute and congratulate them. Uh, we have resolutions. Uh, we'll start out, whereas the Boy Scouts of America was founded in 1910 to teach boys to be good citizens and leaders, and more than five million young boys are members of this organization, and the purpose of Boy Scouting is to inspire boys with the highest ideals of character, conduct, patriotism, and service that they may become happy and resourceful citizens. And Sean Paris is a student and is a resident, uh, excuse me, a resident of Wayne Township, has completed the Boy Scout requirements for the rank of Eagle Scout for Troop 130. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wayne Board of Education recognizes Sean Perrius on this special occasion and congratulates him for his outstanding achievements and special efforts in fulfilling the stride in character, service, and leadership requirements of the Eagle Scouts. Come on, come on up, congratulations. Let's get the parents up here because you got to come on. Come on up. No, no. Right over here. Come on. Let's go. And the mom? And my, wait, oh, wait, that's right. Mom's got to be there too. So this is for you, sir. Thanks. We'll hold it up here. Two of us together here, and then we'll get mom and dad in it. All right. Mom, dad, come on up here. Yeah, I'll give you the camera. I got my American Education pictures. Actually, this is the Cub Scout. Okay. Wendy, I can see your face. Hi. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Close up here. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very honored to present this resolution, whereas the Boy Scouts of America was founded in 1910 to teach boys to be good citizens and leaders, and whereas more than five million young boys are members of this organization, and whereas the purpose of Boy Scouting is to inspire boys with the highest ideals of character, conduct, patriotism, and service that they may become happy and resourceful citizens. And whereas Trevor Smith is a student and is a resident of Wayne Township and has completed the Boy Scout requirements for the rank of Eagle Scout Troop 130. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Wayne Board of Education recognizes Trevor Smith on this special occasion and congratulates him for his outstanding achievements and special efforts in fulfilling the stringent character, service, and leadership requirements of the Eagle Scout. Come on up, Trevor Smith, and congratulations.
At this time, we'd like to recognize our business partners by reading a resolution. Whereas the Wayne Board of Education recognizes the overall well-being of virtu virtually every community is defined and judged by the strength of its public schools. Whereas the Wayne Board of Education recognizes the most important stakeholders in every school system are students and their parents. Whereas the Wayne Board of Education also recognizes that local employers and their businesses also have a vested interest in success of schools. Whereas its policies and practices, the district has sought to create appropriate arrangements enabling employers and businesses to support learning opportunities in and out of the classroom to direct donations, contributions towards instructional programs and activities, volunteer projects, providing mentoring opportunities work-study placements, and occupational training placements. Whereas many arrangements between schools and businesses and employers that have grown out of this environment have brought about a profound change to the way schools and businesses work together as opposed to maintaining a traditional philanthropic relationship. Whereas the Wayne Board of Education and the Wayne Business Community recognize the benefits of true partnership that support the long-term interests of students and schools while providing for sustained business involvement. Now, the, therefore, be it resolved, the Wayne Board of Education recognizes the following businesses and employees, employers for their efforts to recognize opportunities for the students of the Wayne schools. We, will, we have a list posted on the website, and I have to really say thank you Thank you to all our business partners for their vision, their generosity, and their belief in our students. Your partnership is a beacon of hope, shining together with our schools to be the best that we can be in the Wayne community. I thank all of them, and there's countless number of businesses that work with our students, some that work with our special needs students as well. It is a community that works together, and I thank each and every one of them. Dr. Toback. So before I get to my report, I'd like to take a moment to talk about our Gifted and Talented Showcase. So showcases are a great way for members of the community and our board members to learn about important programs in our schools. Tonight, we learned more about our gifted and talented programs, and I wanted to take, uh, thank two of our teachers, Sabrina Bialkin and Scott Restaino, for doing an amazing job with tonight's Gifted and Talented Showcase. You could tell just from speaking with them, they have tremendous passion and energy for their work. I believe we were very fortunate to have excellent educators like Sabrina and Scott working in our schools. So they're in the back of the auditorium. Thank you for sharing your work tonight. Um, so now on to my report. So this meeting is our final meeting 
during the academic year, and I wanted to start our meeting today by expressing my thanks and appreciation for each and every member of our school community, our exceptional educators, our experienced and caring administrators, our devoted support staff, our amazing students, our supportive parents, all supporters of our school system, and last but not least, the members of our Board of Education who work tirelessly to support our school system. As we reflect on this past year's accomplishments, we also look forward with optimism to the opportunities ahead. Our journey continues after a short summer break, but we're gonna talk a little bit more about our goals for next year in a few minutes. So now on to a little bit about the class of 2024. So first of all, congratulations to our valedictorians and salutatorians. Angad Singh is the valedictorian at Wayne Hills, and he will be attending Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, where he'll be majoring in biology and participating in their physician scientist MD program with Albany Medical College to eventually become a surgeon. Ishan Sina is the salutatorian at Wayne Hills. He will attend Cornell University, where he will double major in biology and computer science and minor in either mathematics or political science. In the future, he plans to attend medical school or become a software engineer. Annika Sakar is the valedictorian of Wayne Valley. She will be attending Princeton University this fall to study history and economics. She plans to attend law school and eventually become a lawyer. And Milan Mystery is the salutatorian from Wayne Valley. Milan attends um, intends to study biomedical engineering at the Georgia Institute of Technology and attend medical school with the hopes of also serving as a surgeon. So to further celebrate our senior class, the district publishes a final newsletter for the year, which is really a salute to the class of 2024. Um, so we're very excited for the community to read this year's edition, which will be available starting tomorrow. The newsletter includes dozens of stories and articles about graduating class members and highlights of their many achievements. It also includes lots of information about where our seniors are headed after high school and includes a new section that spotlights some of our outstanding student athletes. Also related to the class of 2024, our college acceptance list is very impressive. That's also included in our newsletter. Our seniors have been accepted to several very competitive colleges, including many Ivy League universities, including Harvard, Cornell, and Princeton. We have several graduates who are staying local and attending schools like Rutgers, Seton Hall, William Patterson, Montclair, Stevens Institute, NJIT, while others are staying in the New York area, attending the City University of New York, St. John's, and Ithaca College. Some of our students will be attending large universities such as the University of Michigan, Penn State, University of Connecticut, and the University of Maryland. And many of our graduates will be attending schools at quite a distance, including the University of Washington, the University of Colorado, the University of Michigan, and the University of Oregon. Southern schools continue to be a big attraction for our graduates. Many will attend schools like the University of Alabama, Louisiana State, University of Florida, the University of Miami, Vanderbilt, Emory University, University of Mississippi, and the College of William & Mary. So again, our end of year newsletter will include all this exciting information and more about our graduates. So please check your email, social media, or our district website, download a copy. Also, I'd like to give an end of year athletics report. Our athletic program has always been a point of pride in the community and everyone knew Wayne had great sports programs. Most, mo uh, most people probably did not realize just how impressive our athletic program is until Nietzsche.com started publishing school rankings and organizing schools in a variety of ways, including best schools for athletes. So once again, in the 2024 Nietzsche Best School Rankings, number one best school district for athletes in New Jersey, Wayne Township Public School District. So in addition to the number one ranking, um, the other thing that's really impressive and something that gives you a sense of just how dominant our athletic teams are. So we had 1,663 total participants in our athletic programs in our high schools. That's more than half of our student population. We won 16, I'm sorry, 15 league championships. We have 134 student athletes that earned first team all league honors. 18 of our coaches earned coach of the year honors. We won 11 county championships. We had 110 athletes receive first team all county honors. We have 13 coaches who won the county coach of the year honors. We have four team state championships. We have one individual state champion in girls swimming. We have um, 41 graduating seniors who will be participating in college athletics in the fall. And we have 12 community service activities with Hills and Valley sports teams working together. So that's another nice part that we've added over the past few years, all these community service projects for our student athletes. 
Also, some very exciting news. Wayne Valley Girls Flag Football will be looking to make it five state championships this year for Wayne Township as they play Ridgewood High School this Saturday, Sunday, the 15th at 7 p.m. at Medlife Stadium. Admission is free if you'd like to attend. And board members, you've received instructions today. If you'd like to receive some advanced tickets, you're able to do that. Um, with regard to the HIB report, I'm reporting the following data related to harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents in the Wayne Township Public Schools. There were 15 incidents of HIB investigated since my last report. Five of those cases were deemed to meet the criteria of actual HIB incidents. Okay, that concludes my report. Thank you. Okay. District goals? District goals. Okay. Various plans for addressing the projected surge in student enrollment due to community construction projects that are in progress. Goal number two was the district learning management system to build on the work of the learning management system committee and move ahead with an implementation plan for both high schools during the 2023-2024 school year. The year-end update, all of our high school instructional staff um, in all grade levels have been trained in the Canvas Learning Management System. We have additional training and work sessions set up throughout the summer. They'll be coaching, they'll be drop-in office hours, and we will have an asynchronous professional development course developed that um, staff can drop in at any time. If they want to repeat something or they're new to the district. Uh, we're going to continue to offer training throughout the school year to ensure successful implementation and leverage all the Canvas instructional resources available to enhancing learning. Middle school will maintain a pilot for next year and will continue to gather feedback and consideration. Goal number three was the youth mental health goal. The goal was to continue to find ways to provide counseling and training to ensure student wellness and support while recognizing the loss of federal COVID relief funds. As a large part of this goal, 150 staff members were offered youth mental health first aid training. Um, the staff was intended to learn skills that they would need to assist students experiencing mental health challenges. Students will be provided strategies to assist a peer who may be experiencing a mental health challenge and how to encourage their friends to reach out to a trusted adult. Um, as of today, the district goal was met and we exceeded the anticipated number of um, staff members who completed the training. We had over 150 staff members do this, and we will maintain our partnerships with NJ4S to offer additional support to our students as needed. Goal four was year two of the special education and MTSS multi-tiered system of student supports. Uh, this goal was to evaluate our inclusive programs for students in grades 1 through 12 and make recommendations to enhance opportunities to help students meet their learning goals in the least restrictive environment. 
Recommendations will also be made to build capacity with general education teachers, support staff, and offer a power to teacher program. The year-end update, uh, LMS Consulting, Educational Consulting reported um, and highlighted the district strengths, particularly the robust and thoughtfully crafted components of our IEPs, such as the present levels of academic and functional performance and the associated goals. The report also commended our commitment to professional learning. Among the recommendations were to enhance our efforts to increase inclusionary opportunities for all students in their least restrictive environment, further develop our MTSS processes district-wide, and continue our focus on professional development. Goal five was profile of a graduate. The goal was to develop a graduate profile for our students first at the high school level and at transitional levels in the future. Um, we work with a committee of 50 stakeholders. We convene several times throughout the year to share input and ideas for a logo and supporting um, posters which detail the six core competencies that we value and consider most through all areas of instruction and student development and socialization during their K-12 education. Um, the committees worked parallel. We had secondary and elementary working, and we came together as a group and agreed on six core competencies, accountability, adaptability, critical thinking, communication, empathy, and perseverance. Uh, the, the next step, which Dr. Toback will talk about soon, is to start developing profile projects um, showing how our students use each of these core competencies to work through um, and persevere. Goal six was bullying prevention and education program. This goal is to develop and implement a comprehensive plan to reduce the reported cases of bullying in the 2023-24 school year by at least 10% compared to the 2022-23 school year through parent, student, and staff educational programs. Um, the plan was based on an analysis of the current and past HIV statistics. Our year-end update, uh, we're very excited. The district goal to reduce HIV was successfully achieved. Um, at the last board meeting in May, the district has reduced HIV cases by 36%. This is really great. The district put in place a number of proactive parent presentations and student support measures and secured additional training to achieve the goal. There's also an HIV and Climate Stakeholder Committee which reviews trends, discusses professional development opportunities, and shares community resources. The committee um, was comprised of administrators, teachers, counselors, child study team members, parents, and members of faith-based organizations here in Wayne. So that concludes the um, final end of the year goal report for 23-24, and now we're gonna move on to our district goals for 24-25. Uh, these are in draft form still. Yep. Okay, so let's get started. Um, for the past 10 years, the Wayne schools have been guided in part through the establishment of district goals. These goals are developed over the course of the year and the result of input from a variety of sources, including parents, students, staff members, but they're also driven by data and statistics about our school system. They always address real needs in the district and they're always achieved. Our system of district goals led to a number of improvements, including our in-house professional development center, the renovation of Preakness School, full day kindergarten, kindergarten wrap, the early childhood program, a school marketing program, high school block scheduling, one-to-one -one computing, a comprehensive review of our special education programs, and a host of other improvements. So if you were to Google school district goals and just take a sampling from around the country, you would immediately notice that our goals are very different from the goals you're likely to find. Most school systems have very general goals, such as um, some I pulled today. One goal was to implement kindergarten through fifth grade English language arts series to increase student achievement or improve communication efforts, sharing good news about our schools. Goals include monthly presentations for board and community, uh, coffee and conversations with the superintendent, improved school website appearance supported by website liaison. So those are just um, a few goals that I pulled from other school districts. They're very different, like I said, from our goals and ours are very much specific. They include lots of details to make sure that all parties involved in the goal are aware of their responsibilities and the timelines. In short, our goals are also good change management practices and that's why each one is always achieved. Okay, so let's get to our goals 
Um, again, keeping in mind, board members, these are draft goals. There are six of them. They are not, I, there's no, no resolution tonight. I'm not asking you to approve them. We're just sharing them with you for now. This is what the administration developed, and there's plenty of time before we get to our next meeting to talk about goals, but it's important to have them established so we're ready to carry them out for the upcoming school year. Okay, so to get started, our first goal is something we talked about previously. Oop, let me get my notes here. Okay. So I believe you have copies of the goals if you wanted to make reference to them because it's hard to read some of what's up there because the letters are kind of small when you look at them from a distance. But um, so this goal is ultimately a goal that is in some fashion or another being considered in just about every forward thinking school district. Artificial intelligence is here to stay. It's important and it's important for the future of our students to have some understanding about it. To get started with this goal, we actually used an AI tool from Thought Exchange called a, um, Thought Exchange Interview. And what that does is that allows you con to conduct with any person an artificial intelligence based interview, including follow up questions. So we have some basic information that leads us to some s conclusions and also helps us understand why this is a, an important goal for the district. So there are 199 people that agreed to be interviewed. These are staff members, administrators, different people from around the district. And to provide just a quick summary, um, there were basically two schools. There was side A. There was a number of people who ultimately participated in this interview who felt that AI is a valuable tool in the educational sector. They believe that AI can be used to enhance student learning, assist in lesson planning, and providing personalized learning experiences. So this is all based on the responses that people wrote, right? It was put together by the artificial intelligence engine. They also see the potential of AI in automate, automating teacher tasks, alleviating grading and record keeping burdens, and differentiating text for students. However, they emphasize the need for proper use and ethical consideration. Side B, so another side emerged from this um, interview. This group of participants expressed concerns about the potential misuse of AI in education. They worry that AI could encourage cheating, plagiarism, and inhibit critical thinking. They fear that AI might replace human creativity and personal connections and could lead to laziness and reliance on technology. Some participants also expressed concerns about the potential of AI to replace jobs and the impersonal nature of AI. So the common ground, so if you took all the responses and added it together, the AI engine determined that both ad advocates and critics agree on the need for proper use of education, or I'm sorry, the need for education about the proper use of AI. They believe that students and staff should be taught how to use AI ethically and effectively to enhance learning, not to replace it. They also agree on the need for guidelines and policies to prevent misuse. Both sides see the importance of critical thinking skills and believe that AI should not replace those skills, but rather serve as a tool to enhance them. And so you have basically this goal that reflects very much the same thing. The goal is to harness the power of artificial intelligence to enhance educational outcomes for all students, streamline operations, and support teachers in delivering effective instruction <coughs> and implementing a new district AI policy. So our policy writing service, Strauss Esme, is expected to release a new AI policy during the summer. And so we'll need to implement that and that'll also serve as some guidance for us as far as what we need to do for next year. Okay, so that is our first goal. Ms. Reichman, do you have anything you'd like to talk about related to it? You good? Yeah. Okay, so how are we gonna get there? Okay, so you could basically see that we need to form an extensive committee. So an executive committee to consider the outcome of what I just shared with you. And then a larger committee that basically will gather information at the building level, provide feedback, and plan for professional development this year and for next year. Okay. And um, so that's basically that goal. District goal two, two, uh, two, I'm sorry, I can't talk, is the gathering spot. So this is a special education goal. And this is basically rooted in something that already exists at our Preakness Early Childhood Center. And it just started this year. But it was super beneficial, and so the department, Student Support Services Department, is looking to expand the goal and expand it to other schools and to other grade levels. Okay, so 
Um, this is basically a parent group. There's an educational component, but what's different about this compared to CPAG and our other special education parent association is that it is far more social. And so the idea is it's a fun way for parents to get together, to learn something, and to also support the school system, but do it in a fun environment. So the other organizations we have are more business oriented. Um, this is more of a, a social gathering. And so that's a nice way for parents to get together and talk about issues of common interest. Okay. How are we gonna do that? Okay, so the first thing is a needs survey to understand what parents would like to learn about and then setting up the structure, set up dates, schedule guests, speakers, plan some activities, and move ahead with the program. Okay. Goal three is the evaluation instrument update. Okay. So you could read there, I don't, I don't want to bore you to death, but for 10 years, ultimately the state, uh, well 10 years ago the state required every school district in New Jersey to come up with a new program for, monitor, or for evaluating teachers. So some of it is based on student performance. Some of it is based on a teacher practice instrument. Okay? In other words, an evaluation form. And so there were essentially four models that were offered to school districts. Wayne chose the strong model, and we've been using it ever since. The whole reason behind this goal is that 10 years have passed since the implementation of this model, and education has changed in those 10 years. So the idea is that the staff itself is comfortable with the strong model, the administrators are used to using it, but are there certain parts of the evaluation instrument? Are there certain indicators that we should consider? Are there changes that make sense? The answer is yes. After 10 years, it makes sense to look at just about everything um, because the world changes rapidly, but this evaluation instrument has not. Okay, so that's basically how we would get there. Same thing, through committees through uh, and making our principals and our teachers major partners in this process because the principals are the people who use the instrument, the teachers are the ones who ultimately they see their evaluations, it's obviously very important to them, so we think that's a really good goal for the district. Okay, so Mrs. Reichman a few moments ago spoke about profile of a graduate and so we have a nice foundation and she's gonna talk a little bit more about what's the next step. This was a really fun process this year. Uh, I had an individual from the community, a parent, or, or soon to be parent, um, in the Randall Carter community, <laughs> who is a school principal in Ramsey and has successfully been um, very engaged and part of this process on an ongoing basis in their schools. Uh, so he agreed to come and with uh, the, his middle school principal, with the high school principal, and engage with our administrators and just talk about the work they've done, the successes they've had, um, how it's evolved over the course of the years, and they made some really, really great recommendations that were very helpful. Um, they also were able to share and, and point out that they thought that the work we did, because once um, you get an opportunity to learn from other people, um, was even better. <laughs> they, they liked what we came up with in terms of of our logo and, and the collateral. Um, but r really the whole point of having and developing a profile is to pro provide a clear and unified vision of skills and knowledge and attributes that you want students to possess upon graduation. So the next step is how do we implement this and what does this look like um, as part of instruction. What coursework is it in? Is it in a math class? Is it in a social studies class? What will the projects look like? And, and how are all of these um, core competencies implemented and demonstrated through these projects. Um, next year will be a pilot year. We're going to be working um, with somebody who has a lot of experience in the field. There's a consultant um, who work with the Ramsey schools. Uh, we vetted out uh, a number of people out there who do this work. It's done nationwide, attended um, many conferences where people showcased and shared, and, and we found something that um, really suits and um, complements the work that we're looking to do. So next year we'll be piloting in the elementary and middle schools. There will be, um, again, a, a committee, smaller committee. Last time we had 50 people, but we'll be able to involve um, our administration and teachers, media specialists, counselors, and we'll frame out the projects. Um, we'll launch them, and then we'll have a chance to evaluate them before we expand to more students, additional grade levels, um, and then um, the following year we'll bring it up to the high school. 
next year we're going to let the high school focus on the Canvas implementation and, and really um, leveraging all the tools that are there, or lots of them. Okay, so we could wrap this up quickly. Goal five is the foundation for our future technology growth. So bottom line is during the pandemic and afterwards, the district moved ahead rapidly with technology purchasing. And the other part is that we also have a number of systems that are older and really in need of replacement. So the goal of this particular goal, the goal of the goal, right, is to basically come up with a very specific plan that will help us with our budgeting when it comes to the replenishment of devices, um, software licenses, access points, all the things that make our network work are the things that we would need to consider for this goal. And that helps us, like I said, with planning, with budgeting, and making sense and making sure that all the purchases that we will need to make are planned out in a very careful and thoughtful way. Okay. Our sixth goal is something that has been a topic in the district for a while. Okay, so ultimately, we have a situation where since the pandemic, our intervention and referral services teams have received referral, referrals well beyond their capacity to address. Okay, so you can see there's a definition of intervention and referral services for those of you who are not in education. But it is ultimately a team of people at each school that come up with services and supports for students who may be experiencing difficulties. And then also making determinations about whether to refer the student for special education evaluation. Okay. So we also have MTSS, multi-tiered system of supports. That's a model that exists in our schools. That's something we have a start with. And the idea is that ultimately um, it, it is a way of hopefully addressing these issues in a classroom in a very regimented way, right? So a very specific planned way. And so the question is, can we do a better job with essentially looking at the merging of these two important operations? Can we align our MTSS model with our INRS? Are there ways that we can improve our efficiency? Are there things that we could do to help our students in a more um, comprehensive way with data? Is, is there, are there commonalities when it comes to students who are referred for special education services? Are there things that we need to know more about when we do our data analysis? And so that's the general idea behind this goal. And this is the information about how we would go about doing that. Okay. It includes visiting other schools, like Mrs. Reichman noted that if you go out and you talk to different people about what they do um, find out about other practices, there's certainly a great benefit to that. And we would also like to bring in an external consultant to work with our teams to look at best practices and consider new models because there are people out there that have great expertise in this particular task. This particular goal can be supported greatly by having an external consultant, but within a reasonable cost. Okay. So um, those are our six proposed goals for next year, again, there's nothing on the agenda. This is something for the board to consider. If there's more to talk about, if there's suggestions, please send them our way. And um, what we would like to do is if it's okay and we're in position, we'd like to have the board vote on these goals at our next meeting. Okay. Any questions? Picture? Board members, questions? Any good? Questions? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Moffitt, revisions to the agenda, please. Yes, uh, the first of the evening under T, emergent human resources. Number five, approval of appointment of district staff. We're going to add under number seven and number 14, uh, prorated after the salary amount. Um, we'll be removing T13 and T14 uh, from the, tonight's agenda. Those are two employment contracts, one for the assistant superintendent and one for the school business administrator. That's still under current, uh, currently being reviewed by the county office. Uh, we do expect that to come back to the board at a future board meeting. Um, we are also going to add under T, emergent human resources, number 21, approval of examination for cause and administrative leave, and that reads as follows. 
whereas the employee ID number 5772 is employed by the Wayne Township Board of Education and whereas based on the information provided by the administration in the judgment of the board, the employee has exhibited evidence of deviation from normal mental health, which is adversely affecting the employee's ability to perform essential job functions. And whereas as a result of the foregoing, the board desires to direct the employee to submit to a psychiatric or psychological examination pursuant NJSA 18A 16-2 NJAC 6A 32-6.3 uh, and Board of Education Policy 3161. And further reads, now therefore be it resolved upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, employee ID number 5772 is hereby required and directed to submit to psychiatric and or psychological examination by the school district's designated physician and a written medical report detailing the results of such examination is to be provided confidentially to the board and be it further resolved that the superintendent of schools is hereby authorized and directed to prepare and provide the employee with appropriate statutory notice of the board's action and the reasons therefore and be it further resolved that this employee has been placed on administrative leave with pay pending completion of the examination and or further board action. I'm moving on to X, Emergent School Resource Legal. We'll be adding number one, X1, is approval of memorandum of agreement and salary guides. That reads as follows. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, approve the memorandum of agreement and salary guides with the Wayne Education Association for the period of July 1, 2024 through June 30, 2025, and further authorizes the president of the Board of Education to execute the new collective negotiations agreement reflecting the memorandum of agreement and incorporating the salary guides as discussed in executive session. We'll be adding number uh, X2 and that is a continuation of suspension for two students and that reads as follows. Resolve that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent continues the suspension of students ID number 5768 Four five one eight zero four and student ID number two five eight five zero six six three seven four, with the provision of home instruction, pending a psychiatric evaluation, and be it further resolved that the student the students are not permitted on any board of education property during the period of his of their suspension and is not permitted to participate in any sport, extracurricular extracurricular activity or any other school sponsored event during the period of their suspension. That concludes the additions to tonight's agenda. Thank you. This time we'll open to the public on agenda items only. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on agenda items only. Residents are asked to state their name, address, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to three minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. Board, the board bears no responsibilities for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at a subsequent meeting under all business. Do I have a mover? Move. Mr. Giordano, Mrs. Wentek. Anyone from the public on agenda items? Three minutes. Now is it on? Testing. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Kazan. Okay, Kathy Kazan. I live in Wayne. Um, this is old business. I want to talk about the last meeting, uh, which I observed. I uh, sent an email to the board. It just was meant to be a private email with my thoughts and concerns about that meeting. But I did receive one response that just gave me further questions. And that was about the discussion that ensued about selling off school property. I, I was a little taken aback by that. Uh, I find it uh, 
interesting that that was mentioned at a meeting where there was no presentation or any further discussion on that topic. So that would lead people to have more questions and fear that, you know, we're going to sell school buildings in this town. Um, the email that I received back said that this was part of a board, full board discussion. Uh, so my question is, where's a full board discussion taking place about the future of our schools and the referendum, if not in public? If it was happening in executive session, then I would assume that that would become sacrosanct and not brought up in public or in a committee. Uh, where it would be only mentioned by the chair if, in fact, it were ready for prime time, which I sincerely doubt, considering how uh, new this information seems to be. But more importantly, this was from you, Mr. Faber. Where, where exactly was this conversation taking place? Uh, again, that's my concern. Uh, was it at exec? Was it in committee? Or was it outside of the board offices with a quorum and violating the Open Public Meetings Act? I have to wonder. Uh, but thank God, and I want the public to not be concerned, uh, nine board members can't make that decision. Thank God. Uh, the Department of Ed would never allow it. So uh, if you are going to have these discussions, please be careful with your comments. And if someone sends you an email about it, don't say, it's not something I can share when you've already shared it. That makes absolutely no sense. So uh, that was, I won't get into the rest of it. It was meant to be a private email and I'll keep it that way. There's been enough criticism of the board and I don't think it's helpful in this community to continue down that road. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public on an agenda item? Good evening, Suzanne Putup, Wayne, New Jersey. Um, I always enjoy the district goals for the following year. It's always thoughtful and very professionally organized and presented, and I know that there's a lot of research and thought put into the goals. But there's something up there that I'm really concerned about. There's no goal that addresses the overcrowding on the elementary level that we're experiencing in the school district. And I would hope that there would have been something mentioned about dealing with the explosion of students we have and where we're going to put them. I know at one school there's a third grade with 26 kids and the other third grade has 27 students. Well, that's higher than I ever remember when I worked in the school district, the number of students having on that grade level. So I am truly concerned. I know there's a hangover from the referendum not passing, but I really would like to see something about where the district is going, how you're going to reapportion our physical plants and facilities to make room for students because if you went to the forum back when we were discussing the referendum it was obvious that the crunch is at the elementary level and I have my personal I have my grandchildren who will be attending school in Wayne I've already seen the libraries being carved into little pieces which is like a stab in the heart having been a media specialist on the elementary level but where are the kids going to go? So thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I do appreciate the goals, but I was left a little wanting. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public on an agenda item? Seeing no one else, I move to close. Mr. Dana, Mrs. Winter. Move on to our agenda. Any committee reports? Mrs. Wentek? I have two. I am reading a committee report for the Finance Committee for Mr. Prasakos. Uh, on May 30th, uh, 
myself, Mr. Faber, Mr. Maffitt, Ms. Ms. Leidig, and uh, Mr. Prasakos had met. Mr. Faber and myself were attending virtually. Uh, we reviewed and approved the prior meeting minutes from April 30th meeting. We reviewed agenda items for the Board of uh, education meeting uh, of, I guess it was the last meeting, so May 30th, I, pardon me, I forget the date. Uh, we reviewed financial reports for April, contracts for the 24-25 fiscal years, the appropriation of non-public funds for the 23-24 fiscal year. We reviewed the funds returning to reserve due to the regular operating district rod grant approval transferred to reserve the June 30th, 24 fiscal year end, and emergent checks for May 30th, 2024 meeting. We also discussed potential future actions. Mr. Maffitt and Mr. Leidig discussed additional, if needed to use surplus in the 23, 24 fiscal year, the need to move forward with regular operating district rod projects that were not granted approved or the grant was not approved by the New Jersey Department of Education. We approved two of the early childhood education grant application to the New Jersey Department of Education. We uh, appointment of the district's general legal counsel and the school physician. Solicitation for orthopedic medical coverage for athletics events. Solicitation for redistricting services contract award for boiler breaching project at Wayne Hills High School, uh, Passaic County Improvement Authority PCIA resolution for lease purchase agreement, and the high impact educational service deadline extension. We also reviewed the food service management company update where Mr. Maffitt and Ms. Leidig provided an update regarding the transition and the consideration with wet vended meals and consolidation agreements. Um, in the business office, Ms. Leidig provided a related update to the following areas, a review of the extraordinary aid process and related special education financial data. The certificate of excellence in financial reporting was given again and awarded to the district and Ms. Leidig provided related overview. Uh, referendum related expenses were detailed by, by Ms. Leidig an office staffing and annual update preparation was given. Uh, the 2024-2025 district budget update, Mr. Maffitt and Ms. Leidig advised the committee of the coming budget opening and related budget reductions. And in recommendations, committee recommended all school resource agenda items. Um, and our next meeting will be held on July 11th at 5 p.m. in the Business Administration's office. That concludes the report for the Finance Committee. I also have a Personnel Committee report where today, uh, Ms. Rigoloso, Mr. Faber, myself, and Ms. Paula Clark had met uh, at 5 p.m. We reviewed the agenda or the minutes from the May 13th Personnel Committee meeting review the June 13th Board of Ed Agenda HR items, discuss the sidebar paraprofessional sick bank uh, agreement, and we're discussing the rates for substitutes for 24-25 year. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Let me just get a little closer here. Uh, the uh, Facilities and Transportation Committee met today. Uh, and tenants, of course, for myself, Mr. Pavlak, Ms. Tibbetts, Mr. Romain, Mr. Skibitsky, and Mr. Moffitt. Uh, we went over a bunch of different things this time of the year uh, as, uh, when facilities really, get, really gets going because we want to get stuff done over the summertime. Uh, a couple of these things include uh, the facilities department is putting out a number of uh, submissions for grants. Uh, especially uh, pre-K expansion graph, uh, grants, excuse me, uh, specifically uh, the chairlift and other ADA projects are being put out. Um, we have a grant for a set of science lab tables. This is not uh, pursuant to the uh, 
the, the withholding of the uh, NGSS ones. This is a different one. This one out beforehand. We're finally getting that back in. Uh, we got successful bids for the boilers for Wayne Hills. Um, June 20th, uh, the data center generator should be delivered. June 26th, the data center facility is building itself. The parts of it will arrive. Um, the custodians met for summer cleaning. We've also uh, met with uh, various uh, groups about the district solar panels and what's going on with those, uh, looking for uh, people to take them off the building so we can do roofing and then put them back on again. Uh, it's an ongoing process to that. Um, we also met and discussed the uh, skinning of the Preakness building. That's the uh, outside surface of the uh, buildings being updated so that uh, they're weatherproof, get rid of the cracks, leaks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from that, um, we did note that school, any requests by schools uh, looking for specific items um, are going to be postponed indefinitely unless they uh, pertain to a health or safety issue. Uh, this in direct result of the uh, lack of funding we are having due to um, budgetary issues coming out for, uh, for ourselves, uh, for the referendum that did not go through, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the single use uh, restroom in Fallon uh, is going strong. It's almost done at this point. Uh, the uh, clocks and the PA systems at JFK, uh, they are finished. And uh, we've been able to, in the transportation department, uh, get settled the 28 routes that we use during the summertime uh, for various trips and for various uh, students going out for special summer programs. And to top it off the cherry, we finished and settled up the dispatcher's contract and we're looking forward to working with our dispatchers well into the near future. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Do I have a mover for the agenda? I move the entire agenda in totality, please. Mr. Giordano, Mr. Paul, any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, roll call, Mr. Muffin. Mr. Battershill? Yes. Mr. Faber? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Mrs. Lamandry? Yes. Mr. Paul? Yes. Mrs. Rogoloso? Yes. Mrs. Wentink? Yes. And Mr. Pavlak? Yes, and I'll abstain on X1. Motion carries. Retirements? You want to go first? Mrs. Rogoloso? I have the honor uh, about reading Ms. Evelyn Racinos. Uh, congratulations to Evelyn Lorraine Racinos on her upcoming retirement from the Wayne Township Public Schools. Evelyn has served our district as a paraprofessional for the past 18 years. Throughout her time with us, Evelyn has been a dedicated and caring member of our educational community, providing essential support to both students and the staff. She has worked with students of varying abilities, providing individualized attention that has helped them reach their full potential. A paraprofessional plays a crucial and multifaceted role in the educational environment, serving as a cornerstone of support. We thank Evelyn for all the contributions she has made to JFK and to the lives of countless students over the years. Her commitment and her hard work have been greatly appreciated, and her presence will be missed. As she embarks on this new chapter of her life, we want to express our deepest gratitude for her 18 years of service to the Wayne Township Public Schools. We wish her joy, relaxation, and all the best. Happy retirement, Evelyn. Thank you. Mr. Dan. Thank you. This one is for uh, retirement, is for Denise Carr. Mrs. Carr, beloved special education teacher, has poured her heart and soul into her students at Randall Carter since 2012. For over 14 years, she's been a guiding light for countless students and their families, changing lives in ways that are simply unforgettable. Her unique ability to connect with the students on a deep level sets her apart. She understands their needs, their struggles, and their potential like no one else. Mrs. Carr empowers the students to believe in themselves, to strive for greatness with unwavering persistence and dedication but it doesn't stop there. Mrs. Carr goes above and beyond, sacrificing her own time and energy to help her students succeed. From lunchtime tutoring sessions to late night phone calls with worried parents, she is always there offering support and guidance in every step of the way. 
She's not just a teacher, she's a pillar of strength and a beacon of hope for her students. They trust her, confide in her, and look up to her as a source of comfort and wisdom. Mrs. Carr gives everything she has every single day, selflessly pouring love and care into the lives of those she touches. The impact she has made is immeasurable, and the gratitude we feel for her is immeasurable as well. Mrs. Carr, you are truly irreplaceable, a shining example of everything a teacher should be. As you embark on the next chapter of your journey, know that you will always hold a special place in our hearts. Thank you for the magic you brought to Randall Carter Elementary School. We wish you nothing but the best as you continue to inspire and uplift those around you. You are a true gem, and we are blessed to have witnessed your incredible work. Thank you. Thank you. And to all our retirees, we thank you for your dedication and service to the district and our children of the district. At this time, we'll open the comment. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment. Residents are asked to state their name, address, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to five minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at a subsequent meeting under old business. Do I have a mover? Move. Mr. Giordano? Mrs. Rigoloso. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? All right, me again. Kathy Kazan, Wayne, New Jersey. Thank you for the invite, Mr. Paul. Uh, I know you missed the sound of my voice. Um, I just wanted to congratulate all the graduates and wish the teachers a happy summer for all their hard work. And uh, you guys enjoy your summer too, but get busy on that referendum. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Uh, Gabriel Nanziola, 1260 Ratzer Road and Wayne. Sometimes things pop up without e you're even looking for them. Uh, a week or so ago, I had the occasion to go and vote. And since I moved from one place to another, I now vote at the Lafayette School. I don't know if any of the board members or the administration have had the opportunity to go to that school and pay attention to the flooring. The voting machines are in the gymnasium and uh, while I had way back in my life some limited exposure to carpentry, I would invite you to get some qualified carpenter to go there and take a look at this floor. Normally a hardwood floor has long running lengths of board, uh, staggered as it will. This particular floor has sections that are about 10 inches by uh, 10 inches, almost square. It was, it was this, if someone was trying to duplicate parquet flooring on a gymnasium floor. Uh, I never saw a floor anything like that, so my concern, of course, as a taxpayer is I would really like to have somebody from the board or the administration tell me as a taxpayer who did the job when did they do it, and how many tax dollars did we pay to do it? Because if you go and look at that, you're going to say this was not done by a carpenter. Uh, secondly, uh, some couple of meetings ago, Mr. Pavlik, you announced that you're going to uh, form a citizens committee mm -hmm. uh, concerning the possibility of redoing a bond referendum. And uh, I was encouraged to, to hear that because now with the mayor, who initially spoke against the referendum, volunteered to be uh, helpful if you had a, another bond referendum around $100 million or therefore, if I remember his speech. Uh, I'm, I, I volunteered to Mr. Moffitt to be on that committee. I have, I think some ideas that would help make the presentation palatable. 
and not only by its content, but by when it's produced or put on the ballot. And uh, I'm waiting. Thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Hi, uh, Karen Murphy. Um, I actually sent all of you guys an email about a month ago about class sizes at Lafayette, um, which actually happens to what Ms. Puttup was also talking about. And I believe Ms. Auerbach uh, forwarded my email to you, Dr. Toback. Um, so hopefully you had a chance to, to read that at some point. Um, I have two sons that are at Lafayette Elementary School. They're in first and third grade currently. Um, and their class sizes are the only two grades currently that only have two sections of their grade instead of three or the current kindergarten that has four sections. Both of my son's classes started this school year very close to the board recommended maximum size and both during the school year went over by several students. My third grader currently has 27 students in his class and my first grader has 23 which are both over the current recommended limit. I understand that as the school year starts, um, that that's very difficult to add a th another section. If you had asked us to abandon our teacher that, that our, our sons had for a new teacher mid-year, I would have told you absolutely not because they both have fantastic teachers and we are very happy with them. Um, but it's a very difficult position to be putting these teachers in at extremely crucial years of learning the basic skills of reading and writing and math. Um, and the third grade in particular, I'm highly concerned about the, the class numbers because this is the group of students that during their kindergarten year were um, learning mostly from home. Their, current, their kindergarten year, which was 2020 and 2021, uh, Wayne was still half day. Um, and because of the virtual instruction, which is what we had to do, they were really not in school that much. Um, they were in two days a week for that two hours and 40 minutes a day because it was still operating on the half day schedule. And if they continued that way for the entire school year, which I understand we came back in person at some point, I couldn't remember exactly when, but there were also periods of time where we were completely virtual and at home. But if you compare the amount of time in person in school with the current kindergarten students, if you remained two days at home, um, the current third grade students had 57,780 minutes less in person learning than the current kindergarten students. And now they have 27 students in their class. Next year, um, I was under the assumption that this would be remedied and that there would be a third section added because they went over mid-year and the, th the recommendation for fourth grade is 28 students. And with the amount of students that have been added to their classes every year, I assumed that this would be pre preemptively um, remedied for next year where they would add a third section. It is my understanding from talking to both the principal of the school as well as um, Ms. Auerbach that that is not um, scheduled unless they get three new students before the school year starts in September. And I'm sure you have all seen that there are a lot of students that have joined the school after the school year started. You know, there's, I just, while I was sitting here, looked on Zillow in Wayne right now, there's 63 houses up for sale. It looks like there's seven or eight in the vicinity of Lafayette, are they gonna sell and kids are gonna move in and they're gonna register and also be in third grade before you have another meeting with enough time to hire somebody? I don't know. But this is something that I, I think is very concerning. I understand the logistics of you know, setting up um, a new classroom of trying to figure out where would you get another teacher from. I understand a lot of times they get pulled from another, another class, but 27 students in this particular grade that had such limited in-person instruction in kindergarten I think is, is really detrimental for their learning. And I understand that paraprofessionals have been added to the class. I'm a teacher myself and have worked with some amazing paraprofessionals, but the burden of the lesson planning and the implementation of IEPs and 
the state testing and the you know, reading evaluations, all of that ultimately falls on the teacher. And you can have the best paraprofessionals in the world helping you, but, but the burden of the education really falls on the teacher. And I hope that, that you consider alleviating the class sizes a bit for, for Lafayette and keeping an eye on the current first grade that is gonna enter second grade at their maximum capacity for next year. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Suzanne put up Wayne. Mrs. Wentick, parents are already feeling the pain. Is that good enough for you? Hello everybody, Wayne, I'm sorry Wayne, I'm Ferris with Tap Into Wayne, and um, I don't know if you recall 10 months ago, some of you weren't here, but 10 months ago I made an announcement about our Athlete of the Year program. It's the uh, Rocco Civilella Athlete of the Year Scholarship Awards Dinner that is happening on this Monday. I'm excited, so all year long we've been doing uh, Athletes of the Month. We've been announcing them and doing special articles for them, and each of these 18 athletes are now up for Athlete of the Year, the Tap and Duane Presents Rocco Civilella Athlete of the Year Award. And uh, we're giving away uh, three scholarships. We have our winners chosen already, but they're under wraps right now. Uh, we're giving away a $5,000 scholarship to the Athlete of the Year, a $2,000 scholarship to the runner-up, and a $1,000 scholarship for the second runner-up. And in the running, from Wayne Hills is Sasha Abramski, a tennis player. Sophia Bradley, you may have heard of her before. Sal Cifolino, a football player. Corey Mulholland, a basketball player. Nalbi Viroqua, a fencer. Sienna Schuster, a basketball player. Kara Langbaum, track cross country, Jimmy Veal, a golfer, and Dean Kira, a baseball player. From Wayne Valley, we have Brian Blake, um, a football player, Riley Crank, a volleyball player, Madeline Voinov for gymnastics, Noah Zendaki for wrestling, Caden Flower for basketball, Omar Ali, back to back for basketball, Sarah Rodriguez for swimming, Ava Maher for both um, spring track and uh, flag football, and our uh, Wayne Valley salutatorian Milan uh, Mystery, who's uh, for uh, track as well. So of those 18, three are gonna get chosen and three are gonna get scholarships on Monday night, and I'm super excited about that, and I just wanted to brag a bit, so thank you, enjoy yourselves. All right. Thank you. Any, old, any new business? Old business. Board member comments? Uh, excuse me, Mr. President, oh. did you wanna close uh, the session? Oh, I'm sorry. I move to close the session. Mr. Giordano, Mrs. Wentek. Dr. Toback, you want to address any? Okay, so um, I would like to address the issue of crowding. And so I'll start with Mrs. Putup, and maybe some of this will also help with my explanation when I get to Mrs. Murphy, okay? Um, Gabe, just real quick, your comments and what you had to share is really a discussion with the business official. We, he, he would have the specifics, but he doesn't have that here. Okay, so, but he'll, he'll provide you with the information you're looking for, okay? Um, but as far as Mrs. Pettup goes, okay, so part of our referendum planning, although we kept it to ourselves, it also involved planning in the event the referendum fails, right? There's a good chance any referendum will fail, and so you have to plan for that as well. And you do that within the parameters you have. So I'm gonna go over basically some of the things that are either, either things that have happened or things that are in process or maybe some things that are things that we're looking at for during the summer, okay? Um, so the first thing I think you're, you're aware of is the idea that we're gonna to continue to invest in Preakness School. You heard a little bit about that tonight. There's work that's being done there to make every classroom that we have there available for students. And so that will take some time. But that's a project that should be done. Um, so that's something that we're, we're working towards and we, we should have that soon. So that gives us a number of additional classrooms. Um, we're also in the process, although I hesitate to mention where, but we're also in the process of researching and evaluating the rental of two facilities in the community. And so that's something that um, already happened. There's another walkthrough that's scheduled next week. And so we'll be able to report that back to the board and, and maybe there's some options there in terms of rental space. We're also looking at offering parents options. 
So in other words, if there is space in another school and the parent is interested in transferring their child there, granted, I don't think many parents will take that option, but the reality is that that is one way of hopefully alleviating some level of crowding if a parent finds that it's objectionable and they'd rather just have their child in a, in a smaller classroom environment. Although I will admit there isn't really much space regardless of where, right? So there are very few schools that have any great capacity um, to help with that situation. Today we received our RFPs back from some organizations that are in, gonna be involved with a redistricting study. And so that's work that we're already working, um, that is something we're already working to do starting this summer and into next year. So a redistricting study will be done and shared with the public uh, probably sometime later next year. Um, of course, the board is considering another referendum, and so you heard a little bit about that. Um, we are also seeking lease prices for portable classroom units, in other words, trailers. And so, but that, that involves a little bit more than just um, rolling in a trailer, right? The idea is that you have to have electrical, you have to have plumbing, you have to have proximity. There's a whole host of different things that are considered, so it's a little bit more than just bringing a trailer in, right? And so that would involve um, site work at each of our schools and making sense of what, make, you know, what trailers we can bring in, what size could be brought in, what purposes they would be used for. There's a lot that we could do with that, but that's also an expense and something that um, we, we expect to be quite costly, to be honest, because you are running electrical and plumbing and all those other things, right? Um, so that's that. Um, with regard to the comments made by Mrs. Murphy, I mean, certainly we appreciate the class size concern. It is a concern across the district, and I appreciate you coming to the board meeting tonight, and it shows the sincerity of your concern. And so we work very hard during the summer to really track enrollment and any increases that we have, although we generally don't plan for changes of enrollment at this point. We usually do that in August. We do have a number of elementary teachers in August that we are able to hire, so that has not been an issue in prior years. And we do look to basically, um, you know, to make sure our schools are properly staffed. And we do recognize that there is a tremendous burden that is placed on teachers when you walk into a classroom of 25 students, 26 students, particularly students at the elementary level. So we do address these issues, and we have, and the board also receives updates from the administration regarding class sizes at each of our schools. They receive that throughout the summer. So it is something, like I said, the administration, the Board of Ed, very sensitive to. But it also involves some difficult decisions. Some of those decisions include putting art and music on a cart, okay? So that's definitely another step in the progression at Lafayette, right? There's things that we could do like that, but that also affects other students. So, um, and I agree with you 100%, it is very difficult when classes go over or limit during the middle of the year because it's only usually by one student, maybe two, but most of the time it's, it's generally by one. The other thing is um, understanding the nature of the construction here. So um, I know that during the referendum process, we talked a little bit about this, but maybe it makes sense to go back and talk about that a little bit more. So we do not expect any students in the district next year as a result of the construction that's going on in the community. We expect small numbers of students to start trickling in next summer. And so really it's the following year where we will probably start to see more students coming in. And that's why the timing of the redistricting study is super important because no matter what, those buildings will have to have an attendance zone. That's also an opportunity to perhaps, um, if we've leased property, if we have rentals, that will also help us with accommodating additional students. So, there is a plan in place. There are things that the district is pursuing to try to um, create options and look for every last bit of space that is available to accommodate students. And of course, the other part is the staffing. Um, you know, we have a budget, <laughs> and um, we have to look. I guess um, you know we have to dig deep to find additional positions, and that that will be a challenge. So we do have a, some additional positions that are built into the budget, but not many. So, like I said, I don't think as far as next year is concerned, that we'll see that kind of explosive growth. But in the following years, the next two, three years, that's when we're going to start seeing that. And that's when we'll have to have um, more in place to, to accept all those students. Thank you. Now we'll go to any new business, old business.
Board member comments. Mr. Battershell. Hi, so I'd just like to go over, I think we spent a large portion of the year talking about many different things, but probably not enough on specifically education. Uh, today with the uh, Gates presentation we had outside, I think that really starts to set a good tone of how we invest in our children from the beginning, um, working all the way up through at this time of year when graduation is starting to occur and it is a very positive time for everybody in the district to be able to go through and look at how the elementary clap outs are working, how they're getting their awards, how we're moving up for the end of year shows, how throughout middle school we're getting to graduations and being able to move on up to high school and ultimately with the culmination at the end of high school with the graduations that are occurring there um, from the 4.0 breakfast where we've recognized over a hundred students this year who achieved 4.0 or better throughout all four four years of their education, the scholarships, the honor societies, and the graduations from the honor society, and obviously leading all the way up to the um, the graduations themselves and going on to their, their future education or choice of careers that they are going to be moving into. And I think that is a great way of being able to look back to the teachers that have supported them from the time that they've come in in kindergarten and worked throughout their entire careers throughout their time, but mostly for those students who've persevered over that period of time, who've really worked over some of the things that we see in the profile of the student as well, to you know, and embodied the sort of things that we expect in Wayne to actually produce themselves into something that we can all be proud of. So I want to say congratulations to the students and thank you to all of the teachers. So as a parent who had, uh, you know, few of my children go through the Gates program. It is a wonderful program. It's definitely um, helped my children a lot in getting ahead and learning a lot. So I'd like to say thank you to the district and to the teachers who you know, set that up and make that happen. Addressing all the comments that are relating to a very specific situation, which relates to class size, um, buildings, you know, the pain that parents are feeling, as a parent with four students in the district, I feel that pain myself. And relating to Ms. Kazan's commentary about what I had said about selling school buildings, it's a very difficult position that the district is in right now. You have a very limited budget that can only increase by a certain amount. We're seeing tremendous growth in the number of students that we have, and we have 15 buildings that require a tremendous amount of upkeep and maintenance that was really gonna take up the vast majority of that referendum. So when you put all of those things together, you start to think, well, did the people who designed the district and built the buildings the way they did you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, think about the potential growth of where we were gonna be 30 years from now, or 50 years from now. Because right now, if we sign it on for another referendum, whether it's 100 million, 170 million, if the vast majority of that goes to fixing the buildings that we have, it doesn't give any room to really address the potential growth that we're gonna experience or where the district may be in 25 years, but we're gonna be paying that bill for 25 years and we may have to come back and ask for more money to do expansion on schools, which, the going rate seems to be uh, expected to be about $50 million per school to expand. So if we have to expand out all of those buildings, I mean, 50 times 15, you're looking at a lot of space to consider what you're gonna be looking at that long from now, you know, 20, 30 years from now. So maybe, you know, my suggestion was maybe the idea, you know, we should look into expanding some of the schools a lot and making them big enough that they're future-proof to a certain degree and getting rid of some of the smaller ones. So then also you cut down on the amount of roofing that you have to do. You cut down on a lot of overall expenses. You could build them more state of the art. So whether or not that actually is going to happen, I don't know. But when you're faced with the budget constraints that we have, a referendum that failed, people who are very concerned about raising taxes and the potential of having to go out for another referendum that may not address the problem at hand and give people the extra space that they need and cut down on the classroom size 
You have to kind of start thinking about things from a different perspective and coming up with creative ideas of how to deal with where we're going to be in 5, 10, 20, 30 years. So, you know, I feel like coming up with new ideas like Dr. Toback addressed and the board is trying to come up with, they may or may not come to fruition. But at this point, shouldn't we really look at every possible, possibility that would benefit the students? Because that's what we're here to do. So you could critique all you'd like, but this is trying to be creative to do what's in the best interest of the town, the taxpayers, and the students. And that's what you put me here for. And that's what I'm going to try to do. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Paul, you good? Mr. Udano. Thank you. I just want to uh, wish the class of 2024 congratulations. Best of luck in the future. You are the results of years worth of dedication from the finest teachers, uh, counselors, educational service professionals, secretaries, custodians, uh, mid-level, upper-level administration, uh, members of the board past and present, and to all of, from all of them, to all of them, thank you very much, and to those students who are going on to make a better world, congratulations and best of luck to you. Mrs. Wintek. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Padab, that you got upset by the words that I used. I didn't mean when I said that they will need to experience pain in order to change the mind about how much money they are willing to spend. It was just a stating a fact based on conversations that I had. And genuinely, people will change their mind if there is a pain point. I don't know what it is. It may be the classroom size. It may be something else. I don't say that I agree with it. I don't have all the solutions either, but unless people, parents, Wayne community is aligned with the same direction that the district needs to be going, the referendum is a hard sell for many. And that's really what I meant. It didn't mean that you know I, I want you to or anyone in the children, teachers, anybody feel any kind of pain. But it's just stating the obvious based on the feedback that I have received. Um, I would like to congratulate our Eagle Scouts who were honored today. Also thank our retirees and hopefully you will enjoy great retirement. Also want to congratulate to all of the students for their su successfully finishing their school year and of course our seniors. Good luck, you did it and everyone have a great summer. Thank you. Mrs. Rigoloso. First of all, I want to say congratulations to the class of 2024 and um, it was an honor to attend the ceremonies at both Wayne Valley and Wayne Hills, um, celebrating the accomplishments of the students and recognizing their hard work and dedication. It was truly inspiring. Um, it's the part of being on the board that I like the best. S especially in the midst of challenges and turmoil in the world, these ceremonies not only acknowledge the achievements of students, but also highlight the support and encouragement they receive from their parents, teachers, and the community. Events like these serve as a reminder of the positive impact that education and community involvement can have on shaping the future generation. They provide a platform to showcase their talents, skills, and efforts to the students, motivating them to strive for excellence and reach their full potential. Such ceremonies also foster a sense of pride and unity within the school community, bringing together everyone, the parents, the grandparents, the students, the teachers, the administrators, just to celebrate their success and creating lasting memories. They reinforce the importance of recognizing and appreciating, appreciating the hard work and achievements of individuals, promoting a culture of excellence and continuous improvement. In a world filled with challenges and uncertainties, moments like these offer a sense of hope, optimism, and inspiration. They remind us of our students, resilient, determined, and I am so proud um, to be part of this Wayne community. Congratulations to all students, parents, teachers, and um, thank you for inviting me. I will continue to visit the schools because I truly enjoy it. And one last thing I have to say, because I promised a certain student that I met, Gina Marie Greenhall, is the first ever girl in Wayne to receive a scholarship to play flag football in college. She has received three offers. I think that's amazing. She recently surpassed 100 catches and 1,000 receiving yards. She was also awarded for the third time first team all division player. Congratulations to Gina Marie, all the seniors, 
the great coaches, uh, Roger Cutlash, Grant Feraldo, and Andrew Imparator. And please, please come support our girls flag football team this Saturday, MetLife, and uh, bring your pom-poms and your bells. And they're playing Ridgewood, so let's go Wayne Valley. <laughs> Mrs. Lemandry. Hello there. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to the Eagle Scouts as well. Hours and hours of hard work and success at the end. It's amazing. You saw all those badges on their shirts. It was amazing. But anyway, so congratulations to them and to their parents for the support they provided. Congratulations to Wayne's graduates, um, their parents, their families the teachers who supported them all along the way and dedicated hours and hours to supporting them. Um, continue reaching for the stars, working hard, and striving to do your best, contributing to your communities and giving back. You've been well prepared. Um, with regards to uh, different presentations that I've had the opportunity to attend. First of all, I'm so grateful to get all these emails and you think to yourself, well, how can I be in three different places at one time? But to attend some of the presentations and to see the success and to see the pride and to see the teachers rallying around these students is amazing. And the district is amazing. The teachers, the administration, everybody working together supporting the success of our students. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Being on the board, I have to say, every single discussion that we have matters because you get from point A to point B and to your goals through discussion and everybody's opinion matters. And we respect one another, we respect the community, um, and that's what I'll say about that. Um, with regards to overcrowding, just a little comment. The board is, it's these little things and that we talk about, this keeps coming up over and over and over again. We talk about the referendum and that it didn't pass. How do we get to where we need to get for the community, for the district, to, be, to enable every single student here to be successful? and to have taxpayers' dollars used wisely. It's so carefully considered and there's so much effort put into coming to the conclusions that we come to. Do we get it right every single time? No, but we try really, really hard. I will say that, we try really, really hard. And we try to meet the um, expectations of the community, um, but that's about it for my long-winded. <laughs> but I just wanted to say, um, I'm proud to sit up here on the board, and I'm really, really proud of the success of the students in Wayne. I don't care if you're a senior graduating or moving from kindergarten to first grade. Kudos to you, and congratulations to your parents. Keep supporting the students, and we will too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, First, I'd like to start off by welcoming one of our new principals, Patty Monaco, who's with us tonight. <laughs> Patty is the new principal at the Early Childhood Center. Patty is not new to us. She's been with us for a number of years, doing a great job as a vice principal in special services, implementing a number of new programs that will surely continue to grow as she is uh, been a force in bringing them all together. Um, to Gabe, the committee is going to be September. We can't too much in the summer trying to coordinate everything. Uh, and with the cleaning of the schools and everything, the facilities department would not be happy with us. Um, class sizes, class sizes are an issue. And we know that. And I, Mrs. Murphy, I understand what you're saying 100%, especially about opening new classes after school starts. We did that one year at James Fallon. And just what you said happened. Everybody who wanted them didn't want their child moved. So yes, we, we keep an eye, the administration keeps an eye on that. Uh, one thing I will tell you is tonight, uh, as we usually do, we pass a resolution which gives the superintendent the authority to hire without a board meeting. 
and it would be approved at a subsequent board meeting, whether it be August um, or September, or August or uh, July. The superintendent does have that authority with consent of the chair of personnel and the board president. So we can hire at that point. Um, the Gates program, wonderful. I remember when I first got on the board and there was a lady named Donna Reichman came in to talk about Gates. I thought she was talking about Gates. And I've learned and grown from her and the program has too from what it was when I first got on this board 20 some years ago. Uh, Wayne Valley football, uh, girls football, great to see the girls uh, Saturday night at MetLife, I'll be there. Um, but as, as we end the school year, there's so many great things happening now. We, so many great events that all board members have been to and shared. And yes, it, it is a shuffling the deck to try to figure out where you're gonna go and how can you get to this place and get to that place and all around. But we try our best and we do. And this is the time of the year we, everybody as a board member loves is graduation time. In the end of the year, going to move up ceremonies in the elementary schools, the middle schools. You know, our graduating class in the high schools, on behalf of the board, we extend our sincere congratulations. You know, these students will begin new chapters in their life, armed with the skills and experience that they've acquired in our hallways. Their achievements are far beyond the classroom. They've excelled in academic, academics, athletics, arts, and community service, as we saw tonight with our Eagle Scouts. But perhaps the most importantly, they've grown into compassionate, responsible, and forward-thinking young adults who are ready to have a positive impact in the world. I also thank our teachers, our administrators, our support staff. Without them, nothing happens. If it doesn't happen in the classroom, it's not happening. And we need to thank our teachers for what they do. You know, our taxpayers, the backbone of, educa of the educational system is on you. We as a board, we assure you that your investment in education is yielding results. Our students not only are achieving academic excellence, but also securing their future. This year, the graduating seniors were awarded over $5 million in scholarships in two high schools. They're going to be attending places like Boston University, Auburn, Clemson, Marist, Seton Hall, Savannah College, Ward, Temple, Syracuse, Stanford, University of Alabama, Princeton, Rutgers. The scholarships are a testament to the caliber of our students and the quality education that they get here in Wayne. Furthermore, a significant number of our graduates are choosing to pursue technical careers that we have prepared them for. They'll enter into the workforce as skilled technicians, tradespeople, contributing to the economic growth of this community and the country. So the next time you see a politician throwing a dollar bill up there and showing how much that most of that dollar bill goes to support your education and the school system in Wayne, we're not, we're not merely spending money. We're investing in the future. And that's quite obvious from that, that short list that I just went through. If you look in the, um, in the uh, bulletin going out, you'll see pages and pages of colleges in there. I, I'd take me a half hour to sit here. We're nurturing the next generation of leaders, innovators, entrepreneurs, and problem solvers. We're preparing students to, complete, to compete in this economy and address the complex challenges for all of them in what they're going to face. In Wayne, we believe that education is the great equalizer, the key of unlocking human potential, and the foundations of a thriving society. We're proud of our, our students. We're grateful for the support of the community and the commitment to providing a world-class education that prepares every child for success. 
On that, I thank you. And I'm for a motion. Second. Mr. Move. Mr. Giordano, <laughs> Mrs. Wedtime. Good night, everyone. Thank you.